Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Welcome, welcome, mashallah, to the end of the year celebration for the Rahma Foundation's girls' programs. We're happy to have all of you here, mashallah, our parents, moms, dads, family members, of course, our girls, mashallah. And it's really an honor to spend some time with you kind of celebrating all the girls' accomplishments and achievements this past academic year of 2022-2023, mashallah. This is also the first year after the pandemic, and so for many, in many ways, in many ways, we were just sort of flying um, by the seat of our pants, as they say, <laughs> mashallah. And we were really trying to get back into our modes, mashallah, the, and I'll tell you a little bit about the Rahma Foundation. Let me first start by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. My name is Rani Awad, and I'm director of the Rahma Foundation, which is a non-profit organization dedicated to educating Muslim women and girls. Alhamdulillah, Rahma Foundation was founded, incorporated, um, in the early 2000s, alhamdulillah, early to mid-2000s. And since that time, we first had programming dedicated to women specifically. And then after a period of time, we decided and realized that as much as you educate the adults, it won't be a full loop unless you will go further back and start educating the girls. One day girls become young women, the women become mothers, and they raise the rest, right? They are half of society that raise the other half of society, subhanAllah. And so we changed our mission statement, actually, to become educating women and girls in Islam. And one of our core and trademark programs is actually this Rahma Foundation programs that you're going to hear from each of one of the groups tonight, inshallah ta'ala. In addition to the girls' programs, we have, of course, a parallel halakha happening in this room every Friday night, same hour, 7 to 9 p.m., uh, for the women, specifically. And with that, they kind of cover various aspects of the deen. Alhamdulillah, recently we were covering right after Ramadan, the adab of carrying, of being a carrier of the Qur'an, the etiquettes with the Qur'an, from Imam al-Nawawi's, um, the adab of Hamlet al-Qur'an. And previous to that, we've covered a number of other subjects in, you know, related to the deen, alhamdulillah. Now, what I wanted to share with you is, in addition to the programs that happen on Friday nights, and we're very honored to be hosted by the MCC, for many years, we have been here at the MCC, but previous to this, mashallah, the Rahma Foundation groups have been in all over the Bay Area and kind of have branches in different parts of the area. This area here in the Tri-Valley is very blessed, I think, alhamdulillah, because there's ongoing programming for the girls. And I'm really excited to kind of share with you each of these groups and what they do and what, they're, what the thinking or their theme was. Before I do that, let me also tell you this. Before your girls come at 7 p.m., their teachers arrive here at 6 p.m. And from six to seven, they have a teacher's halakha. Our model is a mentorship halakha, a mentorship model in which the teachers are mentored so that they can in turn mentor. And so before they go teach your girls, they themselves are taking their own learning. The idea here is, is that you can't actually run on empty. Just like a car, you have to be able to fill the gas in order to be able to then be able to benefit others. And the Islamic concept is you can't give what you don't have. So the teachers are themselves mentor and in turn mentor your girls, mashallah. Now, in terms of how this all started and the ideas behind it, we are very blessed actually because years and years ago, I would always talk about my experience in Syria, which is where I studied, not where I'm from, but where I studied, alhamdulillah. And I saw there a beautiful model in which the woman had these great programs in which they were also teaching the girls as well. And they would have halakas just like the ones you're seeing today. And it was very impressive because they were able to have the girls focus on three things, and that is our goal here at the Rahma Foundation Friday Night Halakas. Number one is love of Allah. Number two is love of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three is bonds of sisterhood. This is not a substitute. This Friday night program is not a substitute for a Sunday school or Islamic learning or Quranic studies. Rather, what it is, is accomplishing these three aspects, which is why the girls, subhanAllah, every single year we've done these programs for the last 15 years, the girls have said, if they miss a Friday, they're in tears. Did you experience this with your own kids? SubhanAllah, to me, that is so humbling and very beautiful to know that they miss their friends, they miss this gathering, and they feel connected, and they form friends where many of them are in public schools or other schools in which they don't have a lot of Muslims in their background with them every single day, day in and day out. Here, they crave that, and they come and actually build these friendships with other Muslim girls that last through high school, 
and later through college. I know this because so many of our girls finished the programs here and then came back to teach with us. So many of the teachers of your girls have been previous students in these halakas. They themselves sat in these seats in their time when they were kids. And they would go off to college, get married, let's say, and they would still come back around and go out and kind of pay forward what they received, alhamdulillah. So this mentorship model continues to feed and all these little girls, mashallah, young girls, I hope one day you'll see them as teachers here teaching the next generation. This is how we sustain the program and we continue with it, mashallah, with your du'as, of course, and your support. I wanted to give you this background and also say that this year we've been very blessed to have a very special person mentoring us. And her name is Ansay Sosan Imadi, who has been a dear teacher to me and somebody who I had to get on a plane and fly across the world to go study with in Syria. And now, subhanAllah, because the way the war has happened, so many Syrians have had to flee their countries and leave. It just so happened by Allah's infinite grace that he actually brought Ansay Sosan to us in the Bay Area. She's only been here for about a year in this uh, community. And she has been mentoring so many of the teachers. So that 6 p.m. halakha I was telling you about for most of the year was actually led by her. Yet she herself was the very creator of these groups that I'm gonna tell you about. It was her vision that we attempted to carry out. And now she's here actually actualizing and seeing her vision all the way in America, subhanAllah. So with that, I'm going to introduce you to you the different groups that we have. They range from ages four, can you imagine four? years old, all the way through high school until they're ready to go to college. Our youngest girls are called the Frogs and Bunnies, followed by, and I'll tell you about each group in turn. The Frogs and Bunnies are the youngest. There are four and five year olds. And then we have after that, our Rainbows, who are lower elementary school aged. After that, the age group is called the Busy Bees, and they are your four and five year, fourth and fifth graders. And then from there, we have the middle schoolers that are called the rosebuds. And finally, the high schoolers that are called the birds of paradise. Each one of these groups has a meaning and there's a purpose behind why they were named what they were named. And so we'll start inshallah with the frogs and bunnies. They will be the first of our group that actually performs for you tonight. They are the youngest, the four and five year olds, mashallah. And as they get ready to come up on the stage, let me tell you a little bit about their background. The reason they were called frogs and bunnies is because frog and bunny are actually two characters, puppets. One is froggy and one is bunny. <laughs> and through the character of frog and bunny, the little kids, remember they're four and five year olds, they're learning a lot of the etiquettes of Islam through what frog and bunny are doing. And so in these two characters, they're actually getting to understand what's okay and what's not okay, what's in, not in a harsh way of saying halal and haram, but rather from a fun way through the puppets to be able to explain what is good behavior and not so good behavior. What do we need to refine and have the adab and kind of fix? And they love it, <laughs> mashallah. They do a lot of singing, a lot of Quran reading, and also just spending time together, starting to begin the morals and manners of a young Muslima, mashallah. So with each group in turn, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the group, but we'll start with our frogs and bunnies if they're ready, inshallah. Yes? Inshallah. And so today we have our frogs and bunnies who are uh, going to pre perform for you in a sheet. And I want to also give a thanks to their teachers, Sister Amina Hakim and her helper, Zahra Shahab. And in, in earlier in the year, we also had Sister Raima Wells as well. Masha'Allah, who have worked really hard actually to work with the four and five year olds. They're the cutest as you can imagine, Masha'Allah, but they're also very young. And so working with this preschool age group is not the easiest, alhamdulillah, but they are just the most adorable. So I hope inshallah you enjoy their presentation and we'll get to see each group in turn. <laughs> Welcome frogs and bunnies.
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله تكبير الحمد لله الله بلاس ذا ما شاء الله سو سويت الحمد لله جاست ذا سويتست الله يبارك فيكم ما شاء الله اند سو ناو يو هاف ان ايديا اوف وات ذا ليتل جيرلز ار دوينغ ما شاء الله ان ذير جروبس ناو ليت مي انتروديوس تو يو ذا نيكست جروب ذيز ار ناو وير ستارتينغ ان ذا ثري جروبس ذات ار كولد ار رينبوز The rainbows were specifically titled rainbows because the colors of the rainbows are many. They are different from each other. And they all, when you put them together, work so beautifully and produce something that's so beautiful to the eyesight and also kind of really inspires you and reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet with each one of their different colors and different backgrounds, when they come together, they're so much more powerful and beautiful than one color alone. And so the idea here is to take differences, and this, everything that we do here is based on your cognitive and emotional milestones and spiritual milestones of the girls, age appropriate. And in this age, they're starting to realize differences amongst each other, yet, subhanAllah, they're learning to work together and to really be something cohesive and beautiful. This very first group is Rainbows 1. We have Rainbows 1, 2, and 3, who each will perform for you, inshallah. And Rainbows 1, inshallah, is doing an ashid for us today. Welcome, Rainbows 1. Mashallah. Thank you, Rainbows One. We appreciate you all so very much. Mashallah. Say bye to your parents. Mashallah. <laughs> Excellent. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 
And now we're going to introduce rainbows two, inshallah. Again, similar concept as before, that the rainbows here, we just split them into grades one, two, and three, because, mashallah, in within each group, they're able to kind of uh, learn from each other more than kind of having a range from one to three. Also, because, mashallah, there's just a lot of demand to be able to have more seats, so we decided why not have three different rainbows, one, two, and three, as opposed to one that was a big rainbow. So come on in, inshallah. And so now we have our second grade, rainbows, mashallah, and I'd like to give thanks, mashallah, to their teachers, Sister Aisha Ali, also to Dalia, and to Aya Sinan, mashallah, who have all been working really hard with our teachers, uh, with our girls, and inshallah, today they're going to do an ashid for you, and also read Surat Ikhlas. Inshallah, Allah bless you all. <laughs> There's got to be some entertainment. 
<laughs> second graders. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Allah bless them. <laughs> May Allah bless them. Alhamdulillah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that, mashallah. And you'll continue, inshallah, to um, hear, <laughs> hear from the rest of our rainbows, inshallah. As mentioned, they were split into three groups, mashallah. Yeah, inshallah, come on, move forward. As you can see, the rainbow theme here, mashallah. Again, different colors, different stripes, different walks of life, different backgrounds. Yet, subhanAllah, together, when you put them all together as sisters, alhamdulillah, so much beautiful and so much stronger as young Muslim women. And so now we have our third grade group. And I'd like to specifically thank, mashallah, Sister Majdunina Abdullah, Sister Sajida, and Sister Naila, mashallah, who have worked so hard with this particular group. And today we're going to have them read a dua, a nasheed, and also surat balad. Do one of the girls going to have the microphone? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Three. Rainbow Street. Rabbish Rahli Sodari. Wayasili Amri. Wahlul Okta Tamil Lisani. Yakum Koli. Audu Billahi Mina Shaytani Raji. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La uksimu bihada al-balad. Wa antahirrum bihada al-balad. Wa walidin wa ma walad. La kudu khulakun al-insana fi kabad. Ayasabu alayya qadiru alayhi ahad Yaqulu ahlaqtu maala lubada Ayasabu alam yarahu ahad Alam naja'allahu aynayn Walisana wa shafatayn وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْرَيْنِ فَلَقْتَهَا مَنْ لَقُبَ وَمَا أَدْرَوْكَ مَنْ لَقُبَ فَقُّ رَقُبَ أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَصْرُبَ يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرُبَ أو مسكينا ذا مطربا ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواسوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآجاتنا هم أصحاب المشمة عليهم نار مؤصدة صدق الله العظيم My heart is so full of longings I wish to be close to my beloved I dream to walk in the streets of Medina and to quench the thirst of my spirit by visiting you, O Muhammad. As-salamu alayka, ya Rasulullah. As-salamu alayka, ya Habibi, ya Nabi Allah.
Now my troubles and worries, and I enter your mind so gently, and I finally stood there before you. I couldn't stop my tears from falling. In your presence, O oh, Muhammad, As-salamu alayka, ya, ya Rasulullah. As-salamu alayka, ya Habibi, ya Nabi Allah. As-salamu alayka, ya, ya Rasulullah. As-salamu alayka, ya Habibi, ya Nabi Allah, ya
Yeah. Never to those without your anger or your wrath. And none of those who have gone with the microphone. Takabeed! <laughs> Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, mashallah. So I have someone very special to introduce to you and you have to stay here for just a few more moments, my dear sisters, mashallah. And that is Khala Amina Abdullah. Thank you. <laughs> mashallah, Khala Amina, who's trying to hide behind me, but Khala Amina is, mashallah, the coordinator here at the Rahma Foundation's Girls Halakha and has been for so many years and is really the reason why these programs run. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless her and increase her. Ameen. Mashallah. And, and her family, mashallah, and all the time that you take from them, mashallah, to be with us and for the girls. I'm going to introduce to you Khala Amna because she'd like to say a couple of words, inshallah, and then we're going to continue with our program. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I know she does not want this, but I have one special volunteer who has been with us for many years that we would like to recognize. She's graduating high school and she's going on to UC Berkeley. Sajida, please come. So I'm really going to embarrass her just a little bit. Um, Sajida came to me in 2016. She was 11. And I remember this vividly. She walked into my office and she said, I want to be a volunteer. And I asked her, how old are you? And she tells me that she's 11. And I'm thinking to myself, who is this 11-year-old girl coming and telling me that she wants to be a volunteer? She needs to be in the program. And she insisted, and she insisted, and I spoke to her mom. Is your mom here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. And she insisted, and I said, okay, I'm going to give this girl a try. And mashallah, she did not disappoint us not one single day. She was developing curriculum, she was coming up with arts and crafts, she was coming up with songs, she was doing everything, mashallah. So we have no doubt that you will walk onto that UC Berkeley campus and set that place ablaze. Thank you so much. Yes. So this is a small gift basket for you. <laughs> We are very happy to hear that I noticed today during our pre-session with the teachers that she said she will be back next year. So we are not losing her. Um, she will still be with us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless you. You can cry. It's okay. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless her. Please keep her in your du'as. The best thing you can do for our teachers is to keep them and their families in your du'as, inshallah. Our teachers, mashallah, are not compensated by much other than truly your du'as. And so they're here. They're volunteering their time. They're here week in and week out. They're here for extra hours for their own halak, as I mentioned, the hour before your girls. And in addition, mashallah, they do this out of the love and the goodness of their hearts. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Please say ameen and allow all of our girls to be able to pay forward when it's their turn to pay forward, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, your 11-year-old will one day be standing here ready to graduate and head off to college and then come right back around and mentor our girls. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And with that, we welcome, inshallah, the next group. And now we have, we're moving into the next age category, and these are called the busy bees. Let me tell you a little bit about the busy bees and why we call them the busy bees. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> By the time you get to grades four and five, this is a middle grade that's right before middle school, but also older than 
the first, second, and third graders. And mashallah, as young ladies who are coming of age, alhamdulillah, they are busy. <laughs> they have a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas. And they are very busy, 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 mashallah. And we know, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in Surah Al-Nahl, about the bees and the Qur'an, that inshallah, that if they were to coordinate and work together, they will produce something beautiful that is healing, and that is the honey. That there is shifa or healing in honey. And so our busy bees work together to literally create something beautiful and healing for all those around them. And so inshallah, I'd like to welcome our fourth grade busy bees group and give a special thanks to our teachers this year, Sister Hassaniya and also Sister Ariana and Alhamdulillah, we're really excited to hear from them a beautiful nasheed tonight. Bismillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Insha'Allah. Um, alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Alhamdulillah for the opportunity to volunteer in this class. Busy the cl uh, fourth grader. Insha'Allah, they're gonna sing four nasheeds. The first nasheed is Assalamualaikum, which is written and composed by Khalasaniya, our beloved teacher. And also the second one is uh, Umiwabi, is um, based on the poem. And the composed is by her, by her sister Hassania as well. And the third song is Muhammad Nabina. And then the fourth one is also the brand new song written by Sister Hassania is I'm Awake, I'm Awake. So inshallah, please enjoy the song, the nasheed, and Jazakum um, Khair Kassan.
Bless our girls. Every time you see one of the groups of girls come up, please make dua for them. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Mashallah. We have an intention, inshallah, here at the Rahma Foundation that our girls, every single one of them, inshallah, becomes more solid in her deen, loves the loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and is ready to come back year after year as they go forward and then one day inshallah ta'ala like I mentioned are going to be the teachers of this very group that way when we're all long gone my folks mashallah those of you who are my age and around it alhamdulillah when we're not here alhamdulillah they're carrying forward this mission Allahumma ameen say ameen Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And with that, I'd like to introduce to you our fifth grade, mashallah, Busy Bees. Again, you've heard the name Busy Bees. You know why the name is Busy Bees, mashallah. Together, they're busying around producing something beautiful, alhamdulillah. Now, our fifth grade Busy Bees, mashallah, who have been, teach who have been taught by Sister um, Ramina, are today going to introduce to you a game that they have themselves created from all of the lessons that they had all year long. And this game has aspects of salah, aspects of friendship, and aspects of masjid etiquette. So inshallah ta'ala, they're going to tell us about the game that they themselves created from all of the themes that they learned this year, and show us about that inshallah ta'ala. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. We are the busy bees. We made a board game. From all the things we learned in Holocaust. Um, we play in the board game. We go from start to finish by finishing, I mean, by spinning the spinner. And, um, and yeah, we have 10 questions um, that Ava will explain to you. We made 10 questions for each game. Now I will ask Janan a question from the game. What is the prayer before Asr but after Fajr? Bahar. And if she answers the question correctly, she gets to move three uh, blocks forward. Do good friends gossip, Iqra? False. Correct. Um, so yeah, like I said, you move start to finish, and there are different obstacles in your path. Um, me, Jenna, Aisha, and Alvina made this board game. Okay. 
You can make these question these ten questions for any age group. Thank you. Inshallah, Jazz for our fifth graders. How creative. Takbir. <laughs> Allah bless you all. Enjoy your game. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How beautiful is that? Mashallah. Incorporating on the spot what they have been learning. Now, my dear sisters and brothers, I'm going to introduce you to the next age group. And this is our middle school age group. And we call them the Rosebuds. As the name implies, they are right in that age where they are no longer children. Mashallah, nor are they fully roses just yet, subhanAllah. They are rosebuds. They are, inshallah, learning, and one day, inshallah ta'ala, with proper nourishment and with proper guidance, will be able to become the roses that we hope that they will become, inshallah ta'ala. Rosebuds are split into grades six, seven, and eight. And alhamdulillah, today, inshallah, we have them together for you. In terms of lead, uh, today, inshallah, they're going to recite from us a portion from Surah Luqman and also share with us some wonderful things that they're holding in their hands. <laughs> Go ahead and explain, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. In this year's sixth grade Rosebud group, we focused on Surah Luqman, specifically the lessons learned from Ayahs 13 to 18. Today, some of us will be presenting the ayat that we connected with the most and why. This, okay. And we had certainly given the command wisdom and said, be grateful to Allah. And whoever is grateful is grateful for the benefit of himself. And whoever denies his favor, then indeed Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. I chose this uh, because uh, it reminds me to always be grateful to Allah. So I actually had the same ayah too. I totally agree with her, but why also she says that Allah has benefited us so much that we always have to be grateful and we always have to like pray with him, pray for him, and just always make dua and just be grateful for everything He has given us. Uh. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يُعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ And mention, O oh Muhammad, when Luqman said to his son while he was instructing him, O oh my son, do not associate anything with Allah, and he associated with him is a great injustice. So I chose this ayah because it reminds me that shirk is the one unforgivable sin and like to not do it. Okay. Um, and we have enjoyed upon man care for his parents. His mother carried him increasing her in weakness upon weakness and his weaning is in two years. Be grateful to me and to your parents. To me is the final destination. I chose this ayat because it reminds me to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our parents and to always respect them. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بنا إنها إن تقول قال حبات حبات من خلال فتكم في الصخرات أو في السماوات أو في الأرض أو في الأرض يأتي من الله إن الله لطيف خبير And the man said Oh, my son, indeed, if wrong should be the weight of a mustard seed and should be within a rock or anywhere in the heavens or the earth, Allah will bring it forward. Allah will bring it forth. Indeed, Allah is a subtle and acquainted. This ayat reminds me that no matter how small a sin or how small a, piece, uh, a good deed is, then that will either be rewarded or punished for. So we must always ask for tawbah no matter how small the mistake was. So I chose the um, same ayah as her, and it reminded me that Allah is all Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is all hearing and all knowing, and you can't hide anything from Him. And do not turn your cheek toward people, and do not walk through the earth excellently. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone self-deluded and boastful. 
Um, I chose this ayah because it reminds us not to be boastful, and um, like it, and it reminds us not to be boastful. Thank you. MashaAllah. Surah Luqman is an amazing surah in which usually at this time, especially in that middle school age, we tend to focus on it because there are in fact so many wisdoms within Surah Luqman. And he's specifically talking to Ya Bunay, O oh, young son or daughter, mashallah. And the lessons that are learned within Surah Luqman is something that we emphasize in this particular age group. So it's so lovely to hear their reflections and also what verses specifically they connected to, alhamdulillah. And now, inshallah, I'm going to introduce to you Rosebuds 7 and 8. These are our 7th and 8th graders together, inshallah. And I want to tell you just a couple of things because I know we're nearing close to Maghrib in about a half hour, about 25 minutes from now, inshallah. So I'd like to ask all of the parents and all of the attendees that inshallah we will break if we continue on because inshallah after this group we have two more groups which are our high schoolers called the Birds of Paradise and they have a lot to share with you as well. As Maghrib gets closer, inshallah, we will break, but then we will also come back because we want to make sure all of the groups are heard and have an audience, inshallah, so we welcome you to please make sure you come back, and because the teachers from all of the grades will be called back to the room here, inshallah, so that we can honor them and gift them, inshallah. So we'd like you to be part of that, inshallah, so please just make note of that as we get closer uh, to the Maghrib prayer. Sound good? inshallah and also after this presentation I just want to also share that it's always been a pleasure and honor for me to be here on Friday nights with all the moms and all the parents alhamdulillah with the Sahma Foundation program I do have a flight to catch <laughs> so I'll be heading from here to the airport um, soon I'll listen to inshallah your presentation and then head out and Khala Amina will continue um, emceeing for the rest of the evening inshallah sound good Alhamdulillah. And so, our Rosebud 7th and 8th are going to be sharing with us things within the halakas that they had this year that really stood out to them, that they connected to, lessons that were very meaningful to them. So I look forward to hearing from them, inshallah. Barakallahu um, fikun. Um, halaka is a community and a sisterhood to me. Um. <laughs> Halakha is a place to share my beliefs on religion. <laughs> One thing I like about Halakha is sharing my ideas. <laughs> Halakha is a place where I can be myself. Um, Halakha means connecting with our community and inspiring each other to become better Muslims. The reason why I come to Halakha is to express my dining loyalty to Allah. Halaqa means friends. My favorite part of Halaqa is when I can talk to my friends who are part of the Muslim community. Halaqa is a place where I can state my opinions without being judged, and I'm always accepted. Halaqa means a community to me. Not only that, but a family. I can laugh, but even cry with it. Halakha is a place where I get to spend time with my Muslim community. Halakha is a place where I feel connection. Um. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you, girls. So cute. So cute. <laughs> I'll say this about the high schoolers and I'll go. Allah bless them. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right, since I'm still here, I'm going to introduce Shh, Waterfall, Waterfall. Shh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> since I'm here, inshallah, I'll, I'll introduce our high schoolers, which, mashallah, I have to tell you, by the time we get to the Birds of Paradise, this is a name, by the way, that they named themselves. Alhamdulillah. You know the plant, the flower, 
birds of paradise, mashallah. And of course, the meaning of it is so beautiful, the birds of paradise, but also it is a kind of flower with the theme of our flowers, mashallah, that we have in all of our rahmah halakas, alhamdulillah. Today, inshallah, you're going to have the ninth and 10th graders coming forward with Sister Nama, who I have to say, I always do this and have to sort of embarrass her just a little bit. But Nama, mashallah, was in my halakha when she herself was a rosebud and a high schooler. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And I don't know that I would have known and dreamed of the day that she herself would become a teacher, subhanAllah. And to have this mentorship model where she goes through the whole program, goes off to college or graduate of UC Berkeley, mashallah, come back around and be able to mentor and teach the girls pay forward what she herself received many, many years ago, alhamdulillah, and actually be able to mentor our young ladies, alhamdulillah, who are now in high school. Thank you, Sister Yama, mashallah. Her entire family is part of this Rahma Foundation. Her mom, Khala Majlin, was here with the earlier group, you might remember, mashallah. And alhamdulillah, her siblings are here too. And so with that, inshallah, we're excited to hear what the ninth and 10th graders will be sharing with us. Thank you. <laughs> well, in that case, <laughs> you go first, inshallah, and we'll find, we'll find the missing student, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, I'll be presenting um, a few haikus I wrote. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salah grows my soul. Zakat, Ramadan, and Hajj, God's great creation. Rahma Foundation created a place for us to learn and inspire. Friday Halakha brings us lots of faith, uh, faith and joy. We are one Ummah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Allah's grace shines bright. Modest girls embrace his light. Virtue, love, unite. Wisdom in their eyes, Islam's daughters, fierce and wise, guiding with love, uh, with love's ties. In Allah's embrace, women in Islam find grace, empowered by faith. Salam. Um, I believe in God. I follow the truth of Islam, proud to be Muslim. We are so grateful we've been taught by the greatest. All praise to Allah. In the name of God, the most merciful, our Lord, all praise be to him. Peace be upon you. We're in ninth and 10th grade. These are, these are our haikus. Alhamdulillah, high schoolers, high schoolers, alhamdulillah, Allah bless them, Allah bless them, say ameen, ameen, ya rabbil alameen, alhamdulillah. And now we have our final group, mashallah, our 11th and 12th grade high schoolers who all seem to have disappeared, mashallah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they are here. Come on, girls. Come on over, inshallah. It's your turn for the, um, for the presentation, inshallah. I don't have video. Video's not I'm sorry, parents. We're going to need just a, a brief pause here. Our 11th and 12th graders made a video, and then they realized that they weren't satisfied with the video, and they wanted to do better. And I encouraged them to do better. And because of that, um, <laughs> we need just a, a slight minute to fix the audio visual because I wasn't planning on a video. They said they were going to come and get on stage and do the presentation themselves. Um, but while all of the other presentations were going on, they redid their video. So I, I applaud them for their desire for perfection, mashallah. So just give me a quick minute to fix the video and then we will get started. Mashallah. 
inshallah. And so that means, alhamdulillah, that we get to have you here awkwardly on the stage. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Allah bless you and increase you, alhamdulillah. It does give me a moment to tell you a little bit more about our Birds of Paradise as we get the tech kind of up and running, mashallah. And the high school girls, 9th and 10th, 11th and 12th, as I mentioned before, mashallah, that they are the final age group, kind of they went through all the way through, and then alhamdulillah, they come back around in order to mentor and to teach. Now, in the high school group, something that I want to tell you about, the way we model this particular group is still part of the three aspects that I told you that are the firm foundations in which we build everything. Love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa love of Allah, and bonds of sisterhood. But something very special happens in our Birds of Paradise groups as well. And this is a place in which there's a lot of, as you saw with the earlier group, a lot of open communication. The ability to be able to speak openly and bring all questions, whatever they may be, into the space which we consider to be the safe space. Whether these aspects relate to mental health, whether these aspects relate to gender relations, whether these aspects relate to kind of future career goals and plans, whether it relates to their spirituality. All different things that come up into these groups and so we tell them bring everything. I'd rather you have a discussion here with people that we have trained and mentored to be able to help answer these questions than try to get answers from Sheikh Google, right? Or <laughs> peers, because this is the age of social media and there is a lot out there in terms of everybody's got a microphone and everybody is saying whatever they want to say without actual foundation and basis. And so they're able to bring a lot of these questions and concerns into that safe space in a place of mentorship. And if and when a situation arises or a question arises in which the teacher is not fully trained on that particular thing, they are trained to say, let's come to that next week. And in between, they work with us to be able to help through the content of how exactly to deliver, to deliver or to answer that more prickly or difficult question. So just to explain to you a little bit of what we do for the high school age group, alhamdulillah, and how we're so honored to have our girls really be with us all the way till this age from four years old all the way, alhamdulillah, to about 17 or 18. And then you might ask, what then? Well, after that, they come to join us here at the Women's Halakha, and they join the adults, mashallah, and they're able to sit through that kind of mentorship process as well. So actually, learning never ends. Literally, from the cradle to the grave, alhamdulillah, is Islamic knowledge and learning and mentorship. And so, alhamdulillah, I'm not sure that they're ready yet, no? <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. I can keep talking, mashallah. <laughs> What is it? We'll integrate a tech course. We'll integrate a tech we'll course. Alhamdulillah. We have to actually get it working because in addition to this, at the very, those of you who were at the very beginning, you saw the slideshow. We love to have the slideshows because it catches pictures from all the different activities throughout the year. Sometimes you forget, subhanAllah, how much we were able to accomplish in the time that we had. And we hope, inshallah, if Allah wills, we'll be back after a summer break in order to come back again with the academic year in uh, September, all the way through the end of the academic year. In previous years, we also had summer camps, and so inshallah, I think we're looking to see and figure out whether we're able to offer that this year. After the pandemic, so much went on pause, subhanAllah, with the Rahmah Foundation and all other groups, because we were not meeting in person. But I want to tell you that all through the pandemic, we were offering groups actually. It was an amazing thing to see the girl, the ladies, the teachers be able to teach remotely and the girls be able to have their halakas remotely. And every single one of these halakas, in addition to the teacher that was teaching, also had a supervisor who was there on mute, kind of, kind of like video off and, and uh, mic off, observing the entire time, subhanAllah. And there was so much learning and growth that happened even in these years where everybody went on pause, alhamdulillah, the Rahmah Foundation was able to continue. And so with that, we have this uninterrupted years, alhamdulillah, being able to really offer this programming with your du'as and of course, with your support. It is a nonprofit organization at the end of the day and does require your support and donations. So please, if you're inspired, alhamdulillah, with all that you've seen, please continue to support it and donate to it so that we're able to continue this kind of programming because these sisters, mashallah, come from the love in their hearts to be able to do this work, mashallah. Of course, they are ready to introduce their program. Bismillah. Okay. So I move for the wait. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Safa Constantino. I'm Sabrina Abdul. And I'm Hayat Dalala. Um, as you can see, we've been a very small group since Ramadan, but in many ways this has made Halaqa more special because we've gotten to know each other much better. 
I've known Mariam, our Hanukkah leader, for many, many years, and I know Hayat from Foothill High School. And I've known Safa since fifth grade Halakha. But it's only since this year that we've really gotten to know each other better. Um, alhamdulillah, we've had some really big highlights this semester. One of these major highlights was the youth qiyam that we all shared that was led by Mariam and Zaid. Um, we had a really deep talk at 1 in the morning, I think, and um, this discussion was about the, the Jijal. Um, this topic was very, very touching for us, and um, it had a really big impact on us. Um, it helped us step back and reflect in ways to improve our Iman um, in this age of distract distraction. And as well as outside of Halakha, we all hung out. So we went to Pleasanton downtown, and generally we all had a really, really fun time. And it never felt like it was a classroom in Halakha. We all felt like we were. it was a safe space for all of us to talk. And it was a, such a nice environment where we could all relate as sisters. Um, okay, so just as a disclaimer, the video we made contains a lot of, like, inside jokes, I guess, um, and we just really, really wanted to share it with you to show you all how much fun we've had this Rahma semester, alhamdulillah. Guys, I brought chips! Where is she? Sabrina's late, as usual. They not tell me about the last night. We, we did, like last week, we literally told you. Like, were you not? Okay, I finished. Let's do highs and lows. Who wants to start? Go now, please. <laughs> okay, um. My high was that I'm done school next week. Wow. Oh, that's very fun. Okay, highs and lows. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be like a brother. Okay, so high, not much of my mom was very but mm -hmm. my high was I got a good score on my ABC exam. Nice. Mm -hmm. so. And then my low <laughs> for usual, there's a lot going on in my life, my personal life. So my high is that I did really well on a math test. Nice. And then my low is. Oh, it's the last day of school, y'all. I'm in school, just I look at this is so sad. Okay, my high is that I'm graduating. And my low is that also that it's the last day. So why are you on the day? Because I don't, I know this one. Okay, it's fine. This chair is like bending. Okay, guys, please, let's focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we talk about what our favorite moment was this year? Mm -hmm. 
Scary. It did bring us closer, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. And it did make you want to become better people, right? Mm -hmm. And better. It myself. actually did. No. Yeah, that's actually true. Because I feel like after that, we were like not just have a member, but we were like actually legit friends. The highlight of that song was the Dijal scene. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? That that was I was about a as. This this was lucky to be on my head because I was about to rip chunks out of my hair because that was so scary. Oh my goodness! But it was life changing. It was so funny. It was so it was, was funny. So you, Mariam, how was your experience um, being a senior or master's student and teaching Holocaust? Um, first, I was very cautious because I didn't know um, and use that I actually. So I guess I did know some people, um, but. I feel like after we all kind of like warmed up to each other, it was really good too. I feel like oh, everyone was really um, thoughtful and passionate. And um, I feel like we talked about a lot of really important things that people don't always talk about. And it was really good to be like vulnerable and open. And I benefited a lot from learning from everyone and talking to them. And, um, yeah, I'm really looking Kaya, go ahead. Oh, it's Texas lighting. I can't do that. Oh, like, face the camera like this. I'm in the back like this. No, you're not. Fine. That's, That's not the same flavor. Oh, there goes the chip. One. Hi. This video is brought to you by an official sponsor. You got this. Sponsored by. This video is brought to you by. Today's video is is brought to you by. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, okay. Yes. Today's video is brought to you by Lace Chips, the official sponsor of Rahma Foundation. Okay, so I had a lot of questions before I came to Rahma. And I thought if I asked them, I would be judged by most people, but Maria made it really easy to ask, and there are a lot of answers. So, okay, is there a red dot? Yes. Okay. Okay, my favorite thing about Rahma um, was that, well, I've been doing it for so many years, but definitely this year was the first time where I felt that I especially had a really close group of Halakha team member friends, um, which was definitely something that I'm very glad to have, especially in my last few, few, few years at Rahma. Um, so shout out to everyone who was in my group. Okay, my favorite thing about Rahma was being able to finally have um, some friends that, you know, I get to relate to on a different level. And I honestly, I'm really, really happy for it to be ending this way with my family friend, Miriam, as my teacher, love her to death. She really is like an amazing person. And I'm really happy to be able to close this final chapter with her. Mashallah, I think they did an amazing job. Um, <laughs> I think when you reflect on the frogs and bunnies all the way up to our 11th and 12th graders and you just look at the different stages where the girls are it's just it's this is what makes Rahma so amazing to see the girls grow and these girls in the last group birds of paradise have been with us for so long and like Dr. Rania said we see Nyatma 
who was with us when she was a middle schooler and now she's teaching. And we see other girls previous years that were with us in the program and then they were teaching and now some of them are off and married and they're in college and going off to grad school and doing amazing things. And we sincerely ask that you all just make a lot of du'a for all of these girls and for their teachers, um, that Allah continue to bless them and guide them and give them really, really good company. That I think is the absolute key here for these girls is to keep them surrounded by really strong Muslim friends. Inshallah. So thank you all parents. Thank you for trusting us with your daughters. Um, it means a lot to us and we really value um, and cherish the opportunity that we have to continue to work with them. Um, now I would like to thank the teachers. Yeah. Oh, can you ask me to come back please? Okay, so I wanna thank the people that are kind of behind the scenes that you guys don't really see that make Rahma Foundation possible. Um, there are the uh, MCC team, we have Brother Munir, we have Sister Arjamand, and we have Brother Merwais, who behind the scenes are either doing audiovisual or they're getting the room set up, or they're advertising, they're putting things out on social media, they're putting the, uh, the Rahma, um, Dr. Rania's halakas on YouTube and all of those things. The three of them, Jazakallah khair, thank you very, very much. Um, there's one other person, she's on her way. Um, I really want to thank because for all the moms here that are able to put your children in babysitting, um, yes. For all the moms here that are able to put their children in childcare, whether it's on a Friday night or during Ramadan, it is all because of Farina. <laughs> so, she is here at so many events watching your children so that you all can attend events like these and she makes that sacrifice and she does it so willingly every time we need a babysitter she is the first one that we call so i really really just wanted to acknowledge and thank her for all that she does for the moms thank you Okay. Okay. Um, I want to start with the older teachers because um, the younger teachers are with their kids in their classroom. Um, so where is Medium with our 10th and 11th grade group? Did they leave? They went back? Oh, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Just like a <laughs> um, We have our ninth graders and tenth graders. Where is my dear bestie? Nyatma. Nyatma is my bestie. <laughs> You're my bestie. Thank you. I want to hug. Yes. Just a little bit. Can you stay here and help me with the back of the talk? Okay. We have our eighth grade teachers, Sister Mary and Sister Heather. Girls, I expect you to be cheering, screaming for your teachers. There we go. She is. She's my helper. Jazakallah oh, okay. khair. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Our seventh grade teachers, Sister Maimuna and Sister Drakshan, are you still here? Okay. Our sixth grade teachers, Zara and Taiba. I would 
would say that Zara and Taiba had the largest group consistently year round, and they did an amazing job, mashallah. Fifth grade, Sister Ramina. Great teachers, Hala Hassania, Hala Ariana, and Asia. Welcome, thank you. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you go get the younger teachers and ask them to come in? Okay. 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 All right. So now we need our younger teachers to come back in. They were having their own little party while the rest of us were in here. So they are on their way in. In the meantime, I feel like we already said thank you to Khala Amna, but if you haven't already said thank you to Khala Amna, really say it in your du'as right now. She really is the backbone of this all. Like, sincerely, back from, they keep calling me out from when I was a teen, when I was a very not nice teen, might I add. <laughs> may Allah forgive me and may they forgive me. Um, alhamdulillah. But, but Khala Amna, Dr. Rania, the team that you guys don't see um, working with the students really are like the backbone of this all. And if it wasn't for them, like I would not have came back to be a teacher. And I also don't know where, would I, where I would be in like general on my path of life without them. So please, please, please keep them in your du'as. As you can see, Nyama and I are very close, mashallah, from the time she came as a middle schooler. And she was... <laughs> gross. <laughs> you were not gross. She was not gross. Um, she was just a very opinionated middle schooler um, who very freely expressed her ideas. And she has now turned into a very, very wonderful young woman, mashallah. Yes, you have to come. Yes, you have to come. Thank you. <laughs> Where are the other teachers? Okay. Third grade teachers, please come forward. Rainbows three. Thank you to our Rainbows teachers. Also, this one right here is my mom. So please make the offer my mom for putting up with me. I love this woman more than anyone in the world. <laughs> Give your mom a hug. Absolutely. With, with great joy. With pride. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, you can go back to your students now. Thank you, guys. We just wanted to recognize and appreciate you in front of everyone. Second grade teachers. Yes. Thank you. Just give those to everybody for me. Thank you, guys. First grade teachers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Aisha and Hannah. MashaAllah, you guys did an amazing job. And we have our Frogs and Bunnies teacher. Um, Zara and Khala Amina, which they probably will not be able to come in because they're with the youngest group and it's very hard to leave them, but we really appreciate them. We appreciate all of the teachers. 
alhamdulillah for all that you guys do. The small token and gift that we give them, it does not compare at all to the hard work that they do coming Friday after Friday after Friday, meeting outside of Halakha, planning what they're going to do with the girls, the activities, the curriculum, the talks, all of those things. So thank you all. Jazakallah khair to the, the young girls, to the parents, and the teachers. Thank you all. Uh, parents, please allow your girls to go back to the classroom with their teachers. They have a small treat for them, and I know they want to give final words and hugs and all of those things. Okay? Thank you.